welcome back to the Thinking Progressive Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Rivers, and today's episode, we're going to explore two apolitical futures. Now, this episode isn't necessarily a hard prediction, although one of the avenues I'm going to argue has a high degree of inevitability, or I'll I'll make that case, or at least attempt to. It's more about an exploration of two possible scenarios uh, within the United States, and really the world, uh, that we might experience. Moments in time where the idea of politics as we know it just wouldn't exist anymore. And, you know, when we say politics as we know it, we have to be clear. We're not talking about the ideals of democracy in our political system. We're talking about the reality corporate-sponsored candidates, local and state political machines, and for-profit media companies that do everything in their power to keep us focused on anything except the issues. Apolitical futures represent a time in our past and our future where the collective vision is so strong that it overrides alternative directions and discussions of They're ways of viewing society objectively, and while they can be used for both good and evil actions, in this episode, we're going to focus on a vision of a more transformative future. Thank you for listening to the Thinking Progressive Podcast. American democracy is crumbling before our very eyes. Trust in our institutions and leadership has been measurably declining since the 1970s. Today, it measures at one of the lowest points in recent history. No matter what happens in our 2020 elections, there is sure to be a sizable chunk of America that will be angrier than ever. Our politics manufacture these divisions, but we can use the same process to heal. We'll explore different forms of apolitical eras and why it might be our best next step. Now, the word apolitical brings a vision to each of us that is mostly a product of our circumstances, right? Where we were born, our identifying social labels and norms, and how we connect to our higher self all shape our politics. There is also the recognition that everything is technically political because politics shapes our ways of being. But for the sake of this article, let's define apolitical as a series of moments where the primary driver for progress is a shared belief in something greater. So much so that the idea of party loyalty gives way to national and global unity. Now contrast that to present day American politics. We are in the midst of a class struggle where many of our elected representatives side with the oppressors. The population is split on fringe ideological issues, distracting from the broader vision of our future. But it wasn't always like this. We have had great eras of apolitical progress in our past that went far beyond party divisions. War has been the primary driver of apolitical ages. The most productive economy ever in the United States was during World War II. Imagining how to create an apolitical era requires us to separate our transformative power from crisis. Our next apolitical era may also be unavoidable. There are scenarios that we can see in our horizon of possibility today that may trigger apolitical eras. You know, we may be unable to avoid another world war, and global leadership seems unwilling to unite against the climate crisis. In these scenarios, divisions still melt away but we return to a cycle that we're trying to escape. Now, social disunity is an increasingly worrisome trend in the United States. The root cause is almost certainly the corporate control of our public media. So for the past three years, Fox News has been the number one most viewed quote unquote news channel in the United States, consistently being out CNN and MSNBC. Now, while each of these stations is guilty of biased reporting, omissions, and misleading information, Fox News injects a level of fear, anger, and misinformation into American society that is beyond comparison to the others. The result is a growing isolationist section of our population, angry, afraid, and unwilling to cooperate with the other. An apolitical America may take its form as a result of continued ideological divides. 
Conservative law professor F.H. Buckley argues that secession is both possible and probable in his book, American Secession, The Looming Threat of a National Breakup. He claims that the growing progressive sects of our populations will eventually call for separation from America's more theocratic and regressive counterparts. Buckley argues that politics will ultimately be our divide. The result will be a system of proto-nations, or smaller nations, functioning through expanded states' rights. Now, putting aside some of the more obvious challenges with this concept, like what would happen to our military uh, or our nuclear arsenal, it does present possible scenarios to examine. We can imagine a succession scenario that climaxes with deep political turmoil, but results in an apolitical aftermath. So a population so divided that collectively we just decide it's better to part ways. It would be the most direct path to avoid a second civil war, which, you know, given the current generational existence, I, I think is a, an absolute priority for many of us. With the separation of the nation into different sects, the laws preventing the rapid mobilization of society into new directions give way to collaborative projects amongst like-minded states. The immediate future becomes programmatic. What change do we want and how do we get there? Without the enemy of the other, presently framed as right liberal or conservative, these new proto-nations begin to work towards reconstruction. Now, secession would be a redefining moment in American history, but there's no doubt about that. It is an expression of our inherited burden as a nation, the revolutionary spirit that brings with it... It is an expression of our inherited burden as a nation, the revolutionary spirit that brings to life new ways of living. You know, and I, I say inherited burden because our, our nation was built on revolution, right? It was, it was an, an experiment in a new vision of reality. So it, it, revolution is something that every American has to deal with as an, a potential option. It, it must stay on the table because that, that's how we existed. And existing political players would have no claim to any existing offices they held, and the population would be right to reject them. Splitting the federal system of the United States questions all rules including the power of states. Many communities would likely demand a total revision of leadership, one more aligned with their vision of the future. Progressive unions would arise in the northeastern and western coastal states, combining resources to scale efficiencies towards programmatic reform. Investments would become more focused on energy infrastructure modernization, uh, healthcare, education, economic arrangements, and the democratic process. A people united around the central theme of investing now for future dividends. These progressive states would also begin to redefine the cultural and social norms that are presently frozen by the Constitution. Religious freedom would be more precisely defined to prevent the abuse of public monies funding religious private schools and the public safety dangers of medical exemptions. Much of the politics around hot button issues like abortion and guns dissolve away as people migrating to the progressive unions would share similar beliefs. Apolitical progressive societies would likely rely on a more direct democracy approach towards prioritizing projects, giving more people more say in their collective destiny. Pulling again from present-day ideologies, the new conservative unions would likely cut back on social services and public investments, relying instead on private sector innovations to drive progress. These market-first policies would incentivize profit seekers and create an environment of short-term gains over the long-term strategic focus of the nation. We would probably see natural resources opened up to the highest bidders, a move that could lead to a brief resurgence in fossil fuel production. We can imagine that initially the conservative states might appear to be better productivity engines, but long term we would observe higher degrees of wealth stratification than we do presently. The conservative unions would probably be a very challenging place to exist for poor people. It also wouldn't be shocking if the theocratic influences attempted to form a union of their own, replicating a deeper integration of church and state found around the world. This union creates various forms of social, economic, and legal oppression under the guise of God. A theocratic state would also be apolitical for a while, rapidly restructuring itself to better support biblical or other laws. They would likely strip women and the LGBTQI communities of rights and agency in their personal and professional lives. 
Now, theocratic states in America may actually hold the most extended era of a politics because when you claim to speak for God, you can justify anything, including despotism. A successionist scenario offers an apolitical alternative for a brief moment in time. The break of conservative and progressive factions would bring with it a broader and more unified vision of alternative futures, but eventually would give way to a new form of politics. Conflicts internally and externally over resources and direction would emerge. Now that last statement is supported by a 2019 report from the Rockefeller Institute that demonstrates that our most significant federal government contributors are from the Northeastern United States. New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Connecticut all contribute significantly more to the federal government than they receive in benefits. The data also demonstrates that the states that receive the most money compared to what they give are states that would likely end up as part of the conservative nations given their geographic and ideological alignments. Because the successionist scenario suffers from unequal resource distribution from the start, it's really hard to imagine a happy ending. Whether we like it or not, our ideological divisions don't override the fact that we're deeply dependent on one another. One problem with the disunited states of America is that it doesn't present an ideal scenario for any ideology. It results in less collective power and resources for all factions and may ultimately lead to violence. What these scenarios do offer is the real potential of developing into engines of radical change. With populations united around new and comparably incompatible ways of living, humanity is, at least for a brief period in time, freer than we've ever been. Now, a more idealistic pathway towards an apolitical future also happens to be inevitable. Technology has been the most consistent factor in the transformation of the human being through our entire existence. No aspect of life defines our understanding, capacity, and potential more than technological ascendancy. Our political future may be the result of technological advances that simply transcend our need for a centralized government. Administrative AI isn't a thing yet, but it's probably one of the technologies closest to our grasp. Local, state, and national governments all have varying levels of bureaucracy. In many scenarios, they are the same actions applied to different people or directions. They involve the standard operation of a community, everything from infrastructure repairs to resource allocation. These decisions are apolitical by nature. Allowing machine learning algorithms to track and understand the tasks associated with governance provides a new pathway towards automating community management. If formulas for resource distribution and management are democratically selected, entire communities could operate without local governments. Elections would only serve the purpose of discussion and debate about the next project or direction. Politicians, as representative leaders, would lose their function. One example of an apolitical project that will have to arise from present-day politics is green energy infrastructure. Transitioning into these new energy paradigms changes humanity forever. We'll apply nearly free renewable energy to every vertical of our lives, agriculture, transportation, housing, production, entertainment, the list goes on. Our political struggles are rooted in a foundation of never having enough, right? Scarcity, material scarcity to be specific. A networked green energy infrastructure radically changes what is and is not possible for human society. If structured correctly, the benefits of this type of apolitical infrastructure are passed directly to the people. The results are dramatic costs and price decreases in nearly every vertical. Free energy reshapes almost every possible direction we would hope to pursue as individuals and as a collective. Now eventually, what we label today as 3D printing will evolve into replicator technology. And if you're unfamiliar with Star Trek, Replicators are devices that create things like food, beverages, or any really any material out of particles. The ability to precisely manipulate and arrange matter at the atomic level will allow us to create anything we wanted anywhere. The wide dissemination of this technology changes the morality of being human. When you can create anything you want or need at will, it eliminates the need for politics as we know it. All of our present political discourse takes place in the framework of scarcity. 
replicators eliminate it. Well, at least eliminate material scarcity. Replicator technology would allow every person to pursue their life in whatever fashion they desire beyond the barriers of the present day. It would eliminate entire economies overnight and would dethrone dollars as our primary form of social glue. Humanity would reimagine community, allowing people to connect primarily over passions and personal growth. Technological ascendancy eliminates many of the functions of governments. At this stage of technological ascendancy, where we have replicators, nation states lose almost all power in a national direction. People now decide their collective destiny, brought together around shared passion projects to create and innovate. Earth becomes a collection of micro-societies. People congregate around projects and interests. Productivity explodes in nearly every direction. More people focusing on the futures they desire to create. If this technological apolitical era ends, it would be due to circumstances beyond our present comprehension. It could be technological maturity, right? A, a stagnation period that drives humanity back into you know, ancient habits. Uh, perhaps some sort of universal revelation will change our perspective so profoundly that we descend into squabbling once again. There will likely be a more direct democracy to help guide and direct global projects. Still, the era of political machines and corporate candidates will still be over. It'll end. Right now, we're at this weird point in human existence, right? Change is changing, and the speed of which is forcing humanity to deal with circumstances that history did not prepare us for. Technology forces us to consider alternative ways of living that make many of us uncomfortable. We see in real time the decay of systems revered for generations. Like an old car we love, we're just finding it hard to face the facts and let go. In the end, the most likely catalyst for an apolitical future uh, is the passing of generations. When millennials are in their late 60s and 70s, Earth will have voting generations who have experienced a life of deep connectivity and rapid technological acceleration. You know, I used to joke when I ran for state assembly, I used to talk about how I was a child of the internet, um, but it's not really a joke and it, it really does mean different things. Uh, and this, this type of generational transformation will empower an empathic approach to organizing society, uh, as it already has. It started, the foundation is already here. The culmination of generations coming together around a broader vision of our shared destiny, focusing on what we are capable of instead of what we have known.